Welcome back. Today we're going to work on getting out the oil tank, the starter, and this transmission, and probably this exhaust bracket. We'll see how far that brings us. There's time left, we'll work on the next parts, but I'd like to have the rest of this gutted today if I could. The motor does leave today, so that's being picked up later this afternoon, which will bring us down to a rolling chassis, and we'll have to figure out what parts to take off next. Most likely that'll be the easiest part of the whole day. Hopefully I get this rear master cylinder out of the way, be able to get to everything I need to get this transmission pulled. go.
on the other side, we'll take this clutch cable out and loosen it up. So that way the, there's slack there. Actually, there's a little bit of slack. I might almost be able to move it, but let's get it undone. That way, that's not in the way as well. Get some wiring here to move out of the way, I guess. Most of it's disconnected. Put some slack into the cable here. Free from the clutch arm. I think I'll back this all the way out. Tuck that out of the way. right there so we'll grab the correct size. A lot of grime in there. Have to grab two wrenches. Much grease on the bottom of this thing, it's hard to hard to get a good grip on.
There's one. So we can get number two right from this side. Nice. That crossover bar is right in the way. Just get to that one there. I think the added grease has kept these malleable for a long time, which is nice. Not frozen in place. This frame's going to need a good power wash when it gets stripped down completely. See what paint sticks at that point. Alright, we're going to move back to the other side, work on those two bottom transmission nuts, and then see if we can get the plate loosened up enough to move the transmission, hopefully enough to be able to take this out without pulling the back wheel. We'll see if it's a possibility. It might not be. I might have to pull the swing arm in order to pull the transmission. Not exactly sure. Haven't done it in a while. Um, I haven't messed with a whole lot of FX shovel heads. Usually mess with earlier FL shovel heads and, and earlier model Harleys, which are typically a lot different. It's nice having you know more room to work. I have to say I feel that the gears in these ratchet wrenches are pretty tough. I know a lot of times I've used ratchet wrenches in the past in this type of a fashion on a, enough that's stuck and I've ruined the gears. So I'm definitely trying these things out to see what they will do if they'll make it. And so far they've done really well. I'm very impressed.
quite the long-winded stud there. Looking at this, I may need to come back with a frame jack in order to take the suspension off the rear of this bike to pull the swing arm in order to get the transmission out. Not sure if there's just enough room or, or not quite enough room. I guess we'll find out soon enough. I have been considering one of those Milwaukee Power Ratchets. Not sure how good they work or if they don't. They look like they do in the videos I've watched. Uh, if anybody has any experience with them, if they like them, if they fit good in you know, tight spaces, if they work real well, if they're good for this type of application, feel free to drop a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on it. I have to get some good feedback. Halfway. It's crazy how long these studs are. I got a quarter of a turn each time. It's going to take quite a while. One of the tools I know I need to invest in is a, a sprocket nut tool. I don't have the right one. Sprocket nut socket, I guess, is what we're looking for. You know, Fast Eddie makes some really nice tools, and I've, I've got a few of them. So I, I think I'm going to invest in one of those pretty soon here if I'm going to do a lot more of these bike teardowns. It's always a pain in the butt to get to. quite enough twisted off by hand. Thought it was gonna go.
Should be able to get it from there. There we are. Right. We're getting there, slowly but surely. Try to get this one plate bolt out from right here. One of the neat features on these is it's knurled right in the middle there, so it gives you a good spot to grip onto the extension. I, have, I like it better than some of the other tools I've used in the past where you have to grip you know, at the base near the ratchet. Sometimes you don't have the right space for that. Sometimes I'm sure this doesn't work too, but so far I like it. Getting this one off next. Loosen it up here so I can get the wrench on it. Maybe I don't have to. Worked out better than I could have expected. It's nice when things work out like that. Got the last one on the other side here. Let's see if we can sneak in between the chain with the ratcheting wrench and get that one undone. There might be just enough room to get to it. It looks like there is. Just enough space to get it out of there, I think. And if I'm going to turn it by hand. Moment of truth. What do we got here? What's going to work and what's not? Probably won't work with that in the way, but. Nope. Not what I suspected. Well, maybe I can nag it just enough. Possibly. Let's see if we can get this in. I want to play in the chain, making me feel like I could probably almost get this, but I bet I can't. Shift over just far enough, maybe. I know this is not the proper way to do it. I had a rag here, get my hands cleaned up just a little bit. Might remove this chain guard real fast. Let's see what that gets me. That may get me somewhere too. It might not. I think it's worth a shot.
Pretty long winded bolt in there too. Slow washers holding that thing in place. Pretty neat. Chopped FL style chain guard. Definitely a unique one. There's quite a bit of slack in this chain here, so maybe I can back feed it off a little bit. I may loosen up. This here, Let's see if I can push that wheel forward a little bit. So we're going to be able to move it just enough to get this chain to fall. So close. Again, I know that this is not the right way to do it. You know, having the right tools is very important for every job. Unfortunately, I don't always have the right tools. Right now, I'm working with what I've got. Oh, that axle is stuck in there. I feel like it might be. So, I'll grab my big wrench and see if we can get it to turn a little bit. inch adjustable to turn this big guy. Mainly why I bought this wrench. There we go. I moved it, that's for sure. Moved it enough forward. Enough to be able to adjust the adjusters now. Took some tension off those. Let's see if we can Get those to move. Find a wrench here. Turn. Right, see if we 
move this forward. It's almost enough. Take the caliper off too to get this to move further. Just a little bit more. That may be the ticket right there. There we are. Now the chain is free. Now I should be able to pull the front chain off the sprocket. I think there should be just enough space to do it. It looks like there is. And so the grind mount, I should be able to slide that right off of there. Amazing how thick that buildup can get. Something I didn't think about was pulling the master link on the chain. Probably would have made sense to start there, huh? Better late than never, I guess. Just enough room to slide that chain out of the way. So now, I think there's enough room to pick this transmission up and get it out. Make sure all the wire is out of the way here. I gotta rip anything off, hopefully. an entire transmission out. One more step in the right direction. Now that's it for today's video. After tonight the motor will be gone and tomorrow this will be a rolling chassis. So we'll see you then.